What's up, YouTube? It's your boy, John McGarrett. It's back with another video. In this video, I wanted to go over, uh, essentially, in my inspiration tab, there was a, um, a, a keyword search called a new argument for religion. So I decided to make a video saying just, or doing just that. Uh, this will be my case for religion. And it'll be pretty clear to start with, but you know, hopefully you stay around for the whole video. Um, because I feel like this is going to be really, really beneficial and I want it to be an argument for religion, but also be helpful for people to like become more successful in their lives. So with that being said, let's just jump right into it and uh, let me shrink myself and let's talk about it. So as you can see here so far, we got a bunch of words. So this is my new argument for religion and it is specifically Christianity I want to be arguing for. And I would like to start off by saying I am not going to argue that God is real or not real. Why? Because you are going to believe what you're going to believe based on the things that people have already said to you. And if you're probably watching this video, you've probably made up your mind on whether you believe in God or not. And it is what it is. You know what I mean? Most people are, are going to believe in God and they're not going to believe in God based on like extraordinary circumstances that happened in their life. Like my own, speaking from my own personal experience, I have very like um, driven reasons to believe in what I believe. And the same is going to be for other people. So I, I don't personally believe in arguing if God's real or not because to me, in my opinion, I feel like when I watch all the debates and stuff like that, most of it just is, devolves into a bunch of like uh, crap talking and disrespectful behavior. And it doesn't, 99.9% it, uh, uh, of the times does not lead to anything productive. And it's just like two sports teams going at each other trying to win a game. So that's just, that's how I see it. I don't, I don't think it's productive whatsoever. And I'm not really going to talk about that. Um, I do think he is real, but I don't think that matters at all. Okay. Cause I'm going to try to make, um, I'm going to try to make my points without using if God's real or not at all. I'm, I'm going to try to speak uh, as much as possible from like a real, like, like what most people would consider as real. Okay. You know what I mean? Like real tangible things. Okay. So now I'm sure you've read everything I'm saying here so far, but I'll just keep going. I'll just run down the list and talk about it. So my argument is simply Christianity leads to success, even from a secular materialistic, which I don't necessarily know what those stand for. I just hear it say it all the time. I uh, said all the time. And I think that's just what like is the opposite of me is when I say that I think it's the opposite of me. Um, so even from a secular materialistic uh, point of view, like if you don't care, you just want to chase monetary value for the sake of chasing monetary value, whether you want to sleep with a lot of women, you want to buy a bunch of big fancy things. Christianity is still going to be your best option to get there. Okay. Like that's it's just, there's, I feel like there's a huge misconception with Christianity and being poor. And that is not the case. I have only taken the, so my own personal testimony is the more I have taken Christianity seriously, the greater my net worth has gone up. Not before. When I lived my life in my 20s, I got poorer and poorer and poorer every day. But when I started taking my faith seriously, I gained immense, like compared to normal people in America, I've gained immense wealth. Like I have a home, a lot next to that home. The whole, you know, I've been very fortunate with my, a lot of my opportunities, but, you know, two vehicles, a house, two kids, uh, people to, you know, take time off. I, t I quit my job because I had enough screw you buddy for my last job that I could just, if I needed to, I could take about four months off without having to work um, and keep all of this running, you know, my home, you know, all this stuff. Just if that goes, like I'm not wealthy by any means, I'm not super rich, but the more and more I take Christianity seriously, the more wealthy I have become. So that's what I'm trying to say here. So, um, so there's a bunch of core tenets I want to like talk about from, I looked up like what are the core teachings of the Bible and then I just kind of grabbed them and then like built uh, uh, explanations on them from like a uh, materialistic point of view. Not, I'm just trying to remove as much of the Bible as possible and make this as much as like a logical conversation as possible. So number one is salvation through, like Jesus says, salvation through him, through Jesus, okay? It is a bold claim, correct? But besides that, let's just forget he makes that claim, whatever. You can say, but the bottom line is that the path of following his example is going to lead to salvation. So now if we look up what salvation means, I gotta scroll down a little bit. Uh, salvation defined is uh, per, uh, preservation or deliverance for harm, ruin, or loss. So uh, preservation means you could say it means maintenance, so maintaining a standard of living. Deliverance means a means of escape. You hear about people escaping the hood all the time and stuff like that. And we normally get there by money, right? So we get money. That's what salvation is. That's what we try to use money as our salvation is to deliver and preserve us from harm, from harm, ruin, or loss. And that's what we use money for. Um, and... Now, to tie that back to what he's saying here is salvation through him. That is, if you follow his example, 
you will like monetary success easily fits inside of this claim because I'll break it down more. You know, this is kind of my teaser, but yeah, I'll break it down more from whatever. And this is, this can be endless content. I can make a lot of content about this and I'm going to make a lot of content about this as long as it's like, as long as I can keep making it meaningful. So number two, he teaches through parables. Um, so Jesus teaches primarily through parables, which uh, this is kind of like a side quest point, but he teaches you to think abstractly, which is what, it, from what I was taught, critical thinking leads to increased likelihood of material gain because, you know, edu- this is the whole point of education is we're supposed to critically think through things and through critical learning or critical thinking. We're allowed to learn like these big abstract ideas, which then therefore lead us to monetary success, like planning out a business. Uh, imagining your future, you know, thinking critically through things like uh, through ideas and stuff like that so that you don't fall trapped to like the snake oil salesman, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera. And then like the core principle through the way Jesus, the way Jesus church teaches, not the church. I don't, I want to distinctly Jesus is Christianity. The church is not Christianity. Jesus is Christianity. I just want to, I want to make that very clear here what I'm talking about because the church, Joel Steed, He's a snake oil salesman, more or less. I'm not trying to throw shade specifically, but churches like that, the super mega church uh, perspective, those are churches failing Jesus, not Jesus failing Christians, if that makes sense. Anyway, so yeah, let's just move on now. Um, So number three, Jesus talks a lot about the kingdom of God. And it is a realm of justice, peace, and righteousness that begins in the hearts of believers and will be fully realized in the future. If you read this from a biblical point of view, it sounds like a bunch of hippie dippy bullshit. And I kind of agree. When I was growing up and I was talking like all, you know, my mom and no offense to anybody who did do this, but they would teach me about the kingdom of heaven is this like real tangible place. And in a way it is kind of tied back to the uh, teaching through parables thing. That's like, this is like in a materialistic this may or may not happen in the future because when they're talking about the kingdom of god in the bible they're i'm pretty sure they're referencing an event that'll happen in the future which will bring a real place to reality whatever but that aside what it means you can also extrapolate from it uh when he talks about the kingdom of god you could uh talk about it's like an idea um but applying a secular, materialistic, naturalistic point of view, this sounds like an idea of a system that promotes these things. Like if you act in this way, this type of environment will then become of it. Like uh, a possibility. It's a possibility if we follow a set of rules and guidelines, much like America started out as an idea that was iterated upon over a long period of time. You could say that this is the same situation. So like when Jesus is talking about these metaphors and these things that aren't real, they're abstract ideas is like through following him and what he's teaching, we can create heaven. We can create a version of heaven or uh, facets of heaven. And I'm not saying like that's specifically what it's teaching. Again, I'm not here to preach. I'm just talking about how this like can be pulled into like how to extract the materialistic wisdom, which is in the Bible to argue for a materialistic, um, to argue for religion in a materialistic point of view. Yeah. Pardon my Japanese. Uh, so the next one is uh, repentance and transformation. And Jesus um, says to repent and transform yourself all the time. Repent of sinners and stuff like that. Um, it'd probably be good if I had included the Bible verses, but these are, you just have to take my word for it here. Uh, repenting of wrongdoing. So this is my materialistic point of view. Repenting of wrongdoing, regardless of what you th- think that is, sounds like a call of action to constantly be reflecting on yourself, judging right and wrong, and then judging and by your own standards. It could be your own standards. It have to be the standards of the Bible. But it's just, in essence, in a vacuum, what this is teaching, being monetarily valuable, is teaching this. Uh, judging right and wrong, then removing unoptimal actions. Sin from the biblical perspective, but it could literally just go... Uh, against your own moral code. Uh, so this will lead you to remove the things that are no longer optimal for your situation and getting monetary success and then only focus on the things that are like leading you towards your goals and stuff like that. Just like in a vacuum, this type of mentality, this mindset being taught by Jesus, being taught by Christianity is leading you to this, which can then lead you to more monetary gain. I'm trying to try to use my hands here to show you before you did this, you were only this big. And then after doing it, you're this big. Okay. Anyway. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> um, so now we have a spicy one, faith and trust in God. All this one gets talked a lot of the baby bro scene. So Jesus teaches to have faith and trust in God. So the way to exact to extract the value from this to assist you in monetary gain is to have faith slash confidence in his system. Um, because having faith, the reason why he commands it is to have trust in it. So let's first dis, uh, debunk, debunk, sorry, um, talk about faith. 
So when faith, in this context, whether people are talking about faith or trust, because it's put together so you can create a context that these two things are meaning mostly the same thing. That ties us to the dictionary first definition, which is just a complete confidence or in something or something. And when people are talking about colloquially, I can't say that word, uh, they think that strong belief in God and doctrines of a religion based on the spiritual apprehension rather than proof. They're, most people equivocate uh, when you hear the word Christian and faith that they are denying truth. Uh, or, you know, Christians feel that way about whatever, whatever. But again, this is kind of unproductive. It is a colloquial, which means used in every ordinary or familiar conversation, not formal or literary. So what, what I mean by that is that when people are using the word faith, they're talking about something that is completely different than what the author or what people are trying to uh, communicate what faith actually means, which just means an, uh, just a complete confidence in something. You know what I mean? Like, for example, when I go to work, I have complete confidence my girlfriend is not going to have sex with other men. Uh, so that therefore I don't worry about it. So that because I don't have that worry in my mind, um, I can then just focus harder and work at 12 hour shifts. Does that make sense? And then the other one, the other one I used. So here's the utility. Here's the, uh, the, 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 the generic example I use to explain what trust is or faith is and what, where the utility is in trust. Like this is why he's teaching it is that you have trusted something is that if you do even not to even, you do not even need to waste time or energy thinking about it. For instance, our trust or faith in car manufacturers allows us to travel 30 miles, roughly 30 minutes, instead of not trusting it and then walking instead. I did, I did, okay, so I typed that out, it was kind of weird. But anyways, saying like, because you trust car manufacturers, you don't even think about the danger of driving a car because inherently driving a car 60 miles per hour can lead to a lot of bad things. But if you just trust the car manufacturers and trust the instructions that the car manufacturers giving you, now you have this new power where you're able to travel 30 miles in 30 minutes instead of traveling 30 miles in roughly 180 minutes so the average mile walks is about 20 minutes when you're walking normally anyway uh, there's a lot to do out there obviously whatever but just for the hypothetical i just try to keep it as simple as possible so if we do not trust it we're thinking we're worrying about it so that if we have to go somewhere to make money seven times a week that's 30 miles away like let's say a commute uh, you're going to be able to work a lot more hours if you drive a car than if you oh god today i'm just not I'm really worried about it i'm worried about my car i'm worried about the car manufacturer I, I should just walk just to make sure so now you have to like plan six extra hours into your commute to get to your job to make money making you therefore a lot less productive so that when you're trying you know what i mean like it lowers the likelihood that you're going to be using that job to extract monetary value from it because of your car so that it limits your options but so that to tie back what i'm saying jesus teaches to have trust in him in him ergo his systems at, le at the very least his systems that if to just trust it just just do it just try it out just do it and you're going to get value from it like the only thing in trusting in jesus is what he's claiming here uh, is that if you trust him and just follow his way, you will gain something from it. You will gain. There's no reason to fear it. There's no reason it's not going to hurt you at all. You know what I mean? Like there's things to, you know what I mean? Like there's things to fear in the world that'll devour you, like, you know, lions and stuff like that. But Jesus is not one of those things is what he's saying. And uh, by Jesus, I mean his systems and his methodologies and everything he teaches, like his, his way, his example is what he's saying here. So hopefully that covered that without too much extra commentary. I'm not trying, I'm trying to be as concise as possible about this, but I've already gotten to 13 minutes, so I need to keep moving along. So then he also teaches to be very humble and very much so a servant. Like in the story where Jesus at the last dinner, he washes his disciples' feet to show them, hey, now we're equals. I was your little bitch and I washed your feet like a little bitch, just like you guys are little bitches. So we're all little bitches. So we're all equally on the same plane. Pardon my French, I'm not trying to disrespect Jesus, but I'm just saying, in a way that people might understand a little bit better that he is just trying to make everybody equal. Like he's like, I am God, but I'm also equal with you. And because I'm God, the way to act godly is to serve others essentially. So now to break into the thing I taught up, let's just read it. Being taught to serve and to look at oneself as lesser allows oneself to enter business because like business better because the core of any successful business is to give away value so that someone maybe give you may give you value in return. If the value they return to you is less than the value you're serving them, um, they're more likely to do business with you because they will always be getting the better deal, right? So if I come up to you and I say, hey man, do you got 10 bucks? I want to give you 20 for it. And then you're going to go, uh, shit. Yeah, hell yeah. Then you, you ask him again, hey man, do you got 10 bucks? I want to give you $20 for it. Can we trade? And you do that. You're going to do that trade a million times a day. And that's the whole attitude of like being a humble. Humility and servitude is like, if you value everything you do is less, somebody else might value it as a lot. So that what they think, you think you're, 
not giving enough, so you'll give an overwhelming amount, and then they're like, oh my god, an overwhelming amount, I only need to pay this much for it? It's like a, uh, it's a positive feedback loop that will always just generate fucking profit. Anyway, yeah, that's essentially that. Um, that's my freestyle version of that without really getting too lost in the weeds. Humility and serving facilitates this by devaluing devaluing your service or goods in your mind so you feel like you need to give more to meet the value they're asking of you i'm not sure how else i can explain this premise to show how that could very easily scale to the ex to extreme monetary value for anyone regardless of religious status okay you know what i'm saying here because this is all devoid of the religious status status the spirituality of being a christian you can still do all these christian things and follow god and not you know what i mean anyway yeah that's the argument i'm making also that the caveat here is being prideful is the same thing as inverse like I hear so many of my friends, this is like, I made a video before about pride and stuff like that. I got so much pushback. I got so many text arguments with my friends. Some pride's good. No, 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 no. I don't even think it's not, that may or may not be true, but it's not even worth your time to even humor the idea of like a little bit of pride. It's like saying, yo man, a little bit of crack ain't that bad, but you would much rather just not smoke any crack because of the danger of most crack usage. Okay, so I'll just leave it at that. Being prideful means you hold a higher value of yourself and that may overvalue your own services, leading to less customer interaction because your services are beyond your expectations for what your things are valued are a lot lower than people are actually willing to pay for it. And then you now have a dissatisfaction of your ex own setting these high expectations for yourself through pride. Um, uh, will lead to dissatisfaction of your expectations, therefore lead to depression and loss of value in yourself and stuff like that. Like it's easier to come up. I heard this, this is amazing. It is easier to come up from free than it is to come down from a thousand. You know what I mean? Like if you get somebody to do business with you and you're working for free, it's a lot easier to ask for a dollar than it is to like ask people for to, to conduct your service for a thousand and then you suck and have to work for free to regain. You know what I mean? It's easier to gain than it is to lose. That's essentially what that premise is saying. So now, okay, okay, moving on. We have forgiveness. Jesus is a big proponent of forgiveness, forgiveness, forgiveness. So what I wrote down is forgiveness is the action of not making someone pay a debt to something they did wrong to you. This can be true monetarily, emotionally, etc. Anything, you know what I mean? Somebody talks crap about you and you feel like you need to get, you need, you feel a need for justice. So you want to, you know, you want to argue with them. You want to yell back eye for an eye. You want to do all that stuff. Jesus flies in the face of that mentality because by learning to forgive the debts of other people, you are not wasting time trying to extract that value from people who owe you perceivably for hurting you. Uh, real or not, you know what I mean? Like everybody's got their own opinion on what is owed, whatever, balancing the scales and stuff like that. Forgiveness like wipes away that entire complication where you don't even need to worry about like how much, like the people who write laws and stuff like that, I don't want to be them. It's a lot easier to try your hardest just to forgive people just so you can go back to making money, okay? You know what I mean? Like writing laws, Politics, super fun to talk about. I love politics and I'm a political guy, but it's like a job I would never, ever, ever, ever want because there's no point except for for fun. Like, but politics is life and death with people. So like, it's not fun. But, uh, but anyway, it's exciting. Anyway, right. This carries over um, to being a very valuable trait because the more time you commit to doing an actual it gives you a positive result, the more monetary value you can gain in the long run. So the less time you spend hunting down people who owe you something if you forgive them you could now just re you know what i mean like say you take an hour to like talk shit to somebody on reddit talk shit to somebody on one of your youtube comments i, I do this all the time i'm still like i'm not better than anybody or anything like that i'm just saying it matter of fact like i'll sit there and waste so much time just talking shit to these people who post shit on my videos but like if i had just been using that hour block time to just record five more videos more money more potential you know what i'm saying uh in the long run, especially like if every instance, like if there's a hater every week, you know what I mean? So that scales up hater, 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 hater it five days a week. I spend an hour hating on them or fighting back with them. That's five hours a week, 52 weeks in a year. So that's uh, 260 hours. I'm wasting a year, 260 hours. I can crank out maybe about two uh, videos an hour. If I really put my mind to it, that's a lot of content. You know what I'm saying? And then I'll be like, that's only what I know of so far. But anyway, yeah, it just compounds like a bad sleep. That's all I'm trying to say here. So the beatitudes, uh, this one, I'm just going to read. In the Sermon on the Mount, Jesus outlined the attitudes and behaviors that are blessed by God, such as being poor in spirit. You know, poor in spirit will inherit the earth. Merciful, poor, the, you know, blessed are those, blah, 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 blah. So, such as being poor in spirit, merciful, pure in heart, and peacemakers. 
there are a lot of these and these types of specific breakdowns to show how they lead to more monetary value would require probably another 20 minute video. Like I could probably make a video like how every line in the Bible makes you money. That, that sounds kind of fun. Uh, um, but yeah, comment below if you want to see that. Anyway, I will comment uh, that the attitudes and behaviors being blessed by God mean that you will be in an opportunity to gain monetary value through being in these modes that if you are not in these modes. That's all I'm going to say on those. I don't want to like break down any of them specifically because like I said, I would need an entire... I could break down every single line of the Bible and then probably tell you some way how it's going to make you money just by like knowing that before not knowing it. Anyway, so the next thing, this is we're getting to the spicy stuff. Uh, the golden rule. This is like... In order of importance, I think I kind of, I tried to rank these by like least important. I'm trying to get to the better stuff. So the longer you stay, that the more value that you're going to get. Maybe I should have emphasized that in the uh, in the intro a little bit better. But anyway, we're in 20 fucking minutes. Sorry. Oh my god. The golden rule. So in everything, do unto others that you would have them do to you. For this sums up the law of the prophets. It's Jesus's words, and I'm just going to read it. Let's just read it. Then I'll talk about it. I cannot stress how meta, meaning most effective tax available, this is for as a core philosophy. This is the core fundamental philosophy of Christianity. If you do only uh, only to others what you would have them do to you, you will only have positive interactions with people. And in turn, increases the likelihood that other people will have positive interactions with you. Positive interactions with people generally equates to favors, friendships, allies, customers, etc. This even, when applied to someone with a psychopathic tendencies, increases the likelihood that they're not going to do any harm to anyone because psychopaths do value themselves higher than everyone. They just need to be taught this and why it leads to more value for themselves. And society will then only benefit from even the perceived worst of a person. So I'd be like, I don't know if I really need to add to that. I think when I typed that out, it was that was like all that needed to be said. Like if you treat others, like you just, whoop, oh, I'll get to it. I think that, I think that just stands on its own. If I, you know, if there's additional context to be there, but they're, they're the, the, the core of it, like if anything from Christianity, if you just take this and then just start using that as your main filter for every little thought, action, everything you do, boom, 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 explosion, explosion, explosion in value. This right here has stopped me from getting into so much trouble. It has gotten me so many opportunities. I cannot testify anything more that this right here is like 99.9% .9 of the Bible. But then the last point zero zero one percent of the Bible is the next thing, and it is even more important. Uh, so it is Jesus commanded to love. Like when somebody asked him, "What? Are, how can you summarize everything in the Bible?" And he says, "Love God and love others." Um, Jesus emphasized the importance of loving God with all your heart, soul, and mind, and then loving neighbors as yourself. And if you if you do these things, you are cut. If you do these things, that means everything else in the Bible can be ran through this line of logic and that's probably where I'm going to get the most trouble but again I'm not here to uh, talk about like whatever I'm just saying like from a monetary point of view if you do these things in this line right here you will make money and we'll break it down with right here uh, with what I got written down to take religiousness and the spirituality out of this and to apply it to an atheist point of view to make it make more sense it just means to love creation or reality you can look at like with this means the same thing with or without God is what I'm saying. Um, this command leading to monetary value, it is still true with or without God, because if you just love reality with all your heart, mind, and soul, with that love, every moral, morally good will, will come of that. And then it just means to love the game to, to my nerds out there. Um, like every good thing will proceed that. I, like you need that like core if your first line of code is to love everything with your mind and soul only good things can come out of that um meaning to love the game this means to love the game you know what I mean don't hate the player hate the game don't don't hate the game love the game that's why you get mad at the player because they're playing the wrong game anyway now just to keep going I love God because I believe in a game maker so I give him my life Though you can still love reality and achieve this, achieve the same result, more or less. I not even more or less, the same result. Now that I read this back, it is the same result. You can just love reality, whatever you want to call it. It's all the same. God, reality. I mean, like from from a uh, from a from a different point of view is what I'm saying. It's all the same uh, in this context. But because I'm not trying to speak against my faith, I believe it's God and Creator and all this other stuff. But like creation and Creator, like what's the difference? You know what I mean, like it's all way above us. You need to love it to even begin. You need to have love, essentially. 
to even begin the rest of the, the rest of the monetary games. Um, but you need to love reality to participate in, in it positively and acting this way to do so will increase the likelihood that you'll be able to be successful. The second part is simple. If you literally pretended, yeah, I forgot there's a second part. Loving your neighbor as yourself, as yourself is very important here. It's very simple, but if you literally pretend someone else is you and imagine they are you, you will only do good things, okay? You will only do good things. Uh, so like if I have, if I'm a robber, I'm gonna go rob somebody at the last second, they transformed into me and I got my gun pointing at myself. I'm gonna have a completely different reaction. I might not shoot, I probably won't shoot that person if it was me pointing the gun at me and if I shot it, if I shot me and killed me, you wouldn't do that, you know what I mean? You wouldn't do that. Nine times out of 10. And we're not here to argue the exceptions. I'm talking about the rule. Um, but um, there's an exception for everything. There's infinite context to be added to any situation, which can you can, you can come up with some hypothetical in one situation that's never happened or will happen to make that wrong. But that's not what we're doing here. We're talking about reality. We're trying to talk about like things that are actually going to make you money, not like a tiny hypothetical that you're going to spend the next two, three weeks worried about. Anyway, so now I said a lot of things, which means there may be a lot of things said. Maybe, you never know. It depends how many people see this video. But I don't care. If you wanna be successful, I think you should do these things and become a Christian. If not, you're a loss. Now, what I mean by all that is that uh, if people see this who do not agree with me, they're gonna be very, just based on what I've seen in the nature of the internet, they're gonna be down there in the comments and they're gonna be freaking <laughs> raging, raging at the keyboard. <laughs> you're wrong, here, 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 here. I can straw man you, here, here, here. Gish gal, gish gal, uh, question, question, question. <laughs> uh, uh, teabag, 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 teabag. Oh, I'm talking shit, I'm talking shit, I'm talking shit. All that, I don't care. You know what I mean? Like you, you make some comment like that, it's not actually like a constructive, positive, uh, conversation i'm gonna comment thanks for the comment with a smiley face and i'm gonna treat you with love but i'm not gonna really engage that i don't really care and if you do that you're just gonna be pumping me through the algorithm anyway so it's okay whatever but that being said that's kind of my thoughts that's my my new argument for religion because i don't think we should be arguing about if god's or god's real or not and most people should enter the scene arguing about it because it's like it's it's generally not a uh it's fun it's fun it's fun to think about that stuff and you know maybe there's some value i'm just not saying because i'm not trying to say like i know everything or anything like that but i just from all the experience i've seen with like all the debates on the uh, on the internet and stuff like that it's only led to more division and it's not really like gone anywhere um productive maybe it's like maybe there's a lot more going on behind the scenes i don't really know but i'm just trying to i'm trying to make content that actually is going to have like tangible results for the viewer i ultimately i'm not here to like i mean like yeah i'm here to, i'm here for god right you know what i mean like as a christian i am doing that but ultimately in that i want to help people and like these i honestly believe are principles from christianity that you don't need to be a christian to believe in but christianity has this and more so this is what i'm saying like the argument for the religious practice of of, of christianity and i know there's a lot of contention with christianity and stuff like that and if um people want to have those types of conversations i can try my best to try to answer or like um answer the hard questions about christianity but i don't know everything but i will do my best to try to like be authentic and fair about it as possible and try to like my best because like i said I, i'm not like a theologian or anybody with a phd or nothing like that but i've thought about it a lot and i've uh, read the entire bible and i have been like a serious christian for a very long time now so I'd be like, there's there's some things I know I might be able to, and I am open to having conversations and take and feedback. I love feedback for like types of co like uh, content you want to see, and um, a subscription would be cool. But you don't don't feel compelled to do that unless you feel like you should. Um, I am gonna create content. You know, I'm switching away from my drama uh, in the past, uh, just drama farming, and I just want to make content that I think is actually gonna benefit people today. Like if you watch this and you watch this video, you can get up from your chair and you can immediately gain. Um, some sort of value like whether it be peace or monet like yeah if you take if you take a lot of this stuff and you get up and just get after it using these like uh frameworks these uh, mentalities you will go make more money you know what i'm saying like more money or more money saving or more money being healthier so you're saving health there's so many different so many different ways to make money using christianity as like your source code and that's all I'm about. That's all I want this channel to be about. I ultimately, like, I have other channels and stuff that, like, I'm passionate about my old school RuneScape channel because I'm ultimately teaching people how to make money. And, you know, that's, money's good. Money's great. You know what I mean? Like, I just want people to excel. And I don't care. Like, it's, if, if I, whatever. You know what I mean? That's all I want. At the end of the day, I just want to help people out. And if you like this, good. If not, good. I don't care. I'm just making this because I have a mission and I'm going to keep pumping content out. And thank you very much for watching. Uh, Peace out. See you later.